it's time for the main event. <laughs> okay. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. We have a new champion, everybody. We have a new champion. I'm proud to announce Kid Rock. No longer the king of cringe. In fact, Tom McDonald, he's been waiting in the wings for a while, right? You can tell when someone's on a tear, when they've won like eight fights in a row, and you're like, man, as soon as this guy gets a shot at the belt, he's going to take that thing and go home with it. You're going to say, welcome to the new era, right? Today, we have one of those moments. Tom McDonald <laughs> has dropped a new song called Facts, featuring your man, Ben Shapiro, <laughs> on the mic, on the mic. And... It is as bad as you think, okay? And so uh, I'm going to make fun of this song a little bit, but there's some serious things I want to say about it too. We'll talk about this. Oh, right wing is the new punk. Uh, I I don't think I agree with you on that. I think, I think at some point I might have agreed with you, but I don't agree with you anymore. <laughs> if being right wing was ever punk, uh, Tom McDonald killed that. Uh, and we'll see why in this song. Let's check it out. They call me offensive, controversial. It's only two genders, boys and girls. They can't cancel my message because I'm the biggest independent rapper in the whole freaking world. Look at in the first six seconds of the song. What does he say here? First six seconds of the song. There's only two genders, boys and girls. They can't cancel my message. <laughs> There's only two genders, boys and girls. I'm the most successful independent rapper in the world. <laughs> Goes right for the kill. I like this uh this video set here with all these old CRT TVs piled in a wall in this abandoned warehouse like is this some warehouse in la that exists like only to be a video set for the most like mid generic music in the world i feel like there's like 10 crappy generic metalcore bands that have used this exact same set <laughs> yeah the gent video set yeah you can see the lights are on right so um he got a deal on this set they're gonna go shoot like a crappy metalcore video in the evening but he got a deal on it. He comes in at noon and they'll let him use the set for half price. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is how we know that it's the gent video set. We got the LEDs. We got the LEDs in the warehouse with all the TVs. <laughs> there it is. I'm just so glad that Tom McDonald is out here. Finally, someone who's not ashamed of being white. You know, it's only a matter of time, people. It's only a matter of time until Tom McDonald has a song with a line that is something to the effect of white men are the real N-words these days, right? It's guaranteed that he will drop a song that says that, right? <laughs> you know what's so fucked up about this world today? White men are the real N-words. Absolutely guarantee you that that's coming out of Tom McDonald's mouth at some time in the near future. I don't want to talk to folks who don't get it. Go woke, go broke, no hope. It's pathetic. Pro-choice pronouns, pro-love, you're progressive. And the harping on the pronouns and stuff. Listen, uh, it just feels like, are we still talking about pronouns? Wasn't that kind of like, I don't know, wasn't that like two years ago? Are, are, is pro are pronouns, are people still outraged about pronouns? I feel like we're over that. Where are the American flags at? Remember when people would hang those? They've been taken down, they've all been replaced with BLM flags or a rainbow. Where are the American flags at? Remember when people would hang those? They've been taken down and replaced by BLM flags or a rainbow. Okay, number one, uh, friendly reminder, Tom McDonald is Canadian, okay? So remember that. Remember next time that he's uh, wrapping himself on an American flag and talking about how great this country is. Remember that he's Canadian, number one. And number two, you know, the BLM thing. This is, okay, this is the first issue that I have with Tom McDonald and with this just sort of like corner of the internet in general, okay? You know, he's still harping on BLM. And in the same way as, you know, there's these like, you know, liberals who are still harping on January 6th. And I want to just take them aside and put my arm around them and be like, my man, that was four years ago. You lot, you got to let it go. Okay. We're not still outraged about January 6th. You got to let it go. I want to put my arm around Tom and say the same thing. Be like, Tom, I hate to be the one to break it to you. But uh, the BLM thing, uh, that was a few years ago. That is no longer the current thing. <laughs> I don't know what the current thing is because I have better things to do with my life than know what Facebook dads are outraged about at the moment. But I'm pretty sure we're not mad about BLM anymore. <laughs> it just, it feels like all of this is just like, you know, stuck in 2016. You remember, you remember back in 2016, 2017, when there was all the, you know, Facebook videos about, you know, Ben Shapiro and people like that owning college students, right? You know, it's like a liberal college student tries to 
own Ben Shapiro and instantly regrets it. I feel like they're kind of stuck kind of in that era. Like, you know, if you ever go to like Nam or something like that and you see one of these like 55 year old dudes that's still dressed like he's in Guns N' Roses, you know, and you're like, ooh, God, this guy is still stuck in 1989. That's rough. That's rough. And I feel like this whole corner of the internet is still stuck in like 2016, you know? And you're like, uh, let's move on. <laughs> let's not still be mad about stuff from 2016. I like this, uh, how he takes the moral high ground here. We're not promoting drugs and hoes. You know, it's, uh, I don't like to use this word dog whistle, okay? Because the people who use the word dog whistle tend to be, like, insufferable, like, you know, Democrat Reddit people. But it feels like a little bit of a dog whistle, doesn't it? You know, to basically be like, we're not like those people that talk about the drugs and guns and hoes. We're better than that. I'm like, hmm, what are you, what are you getting at here? <laughs> I don't care if oh, I here's your man. Here's my, here's my real issue. This whole, like, I don't care if I offend you kind of thing. I was put here to, you know, to get in your face, right? And my thing with this is, like, for somebody who spends all this time and energy saying how much he doesn't care what other people think or do, he seems pretty upset about a lot of the things that other people say and do, right? And that's sort of my issue with these people in general. I feel like at this point, they're kind of the snowflakes, right? They've become the snowflakes. They're the ones that seem pretty upset. Like the fact that somebody else refers to themselves as they, them. Why would I care? You can call yourself whatever the fuck you want, right? Why would I give a shit what word you use to describe yourself? Because I, unlike Tom McDonald, I am not a snowflake. I feel like that's sort of like, in all seriousness, that's my issue with this is like, I'm old enough to remember many different versions of this movie, okay? Like back in the 80s, I remember it was like the Christian conservatives that were the ones who were easily upset and offended by everything and they wanted to control speech, right? Like the PMRC, Back in the 80s when they would get upset about Ozzy Osbourne and like totally misinterpret his lyrics, you know, like Suicide Solution, which was obviously a song about alcoholism. They said that it was, you know, promoting self-harm and stuff like that. And everyone rolled their eyes and they're just like, shut the fuck up. You don't understand this. Just fucking ignore it. Yeah, the satanic panic. Exactly. I remember that, you know, and then it flip. It always flips like this. Right. And then in the 90s. There was the first wave of, you know, what they called politically correct at the time, right? When people would, you know, it's not history, it's herstory. And you'd just be like, shut the fuck up. Like, we get it, okay? And then in the 2000s, it was the Tea Party, right? And then after that, it was the SJWs, right? That wanted to control everyone's speech. The woke people that wanted to control everyone's speech and tell everyone what words they could and couldn't use. And they were the snowflakes for a while. And now it's flipped again, where I feel like the MAGA people are the snowflakes, right? <laughs> so I feel like I'm going to make people mad on both sides right now, okay, with my reaction. I feel like I'm going to get two reactions in the comments to this. There's going to be some people that are calling me like a, a woke you know, SJW or whatever, because I don't like Tom McDonald. And then there's going to be other people that are calling me like, you know, a fascist bootlicker because I'm not down with woke shit. And at the end of the day, my whole thing is I find it frustrating and disappointing when people get upset about shit that doesn't matter, right? Because my actual core values are freedom and equality and caring for people who need our help, right? So the part that's disappointing to me is that there are people on both sides who are arguing on Facebook, and I'm saying Facebook because that's how fucking behind the times all these people are, that there's people who are arguing on Facebook about fucking the dumbest shit, like flags and pronouns and stuff like that. Meanwhile, like how many single mothers are there right now in this country who are literally struggling just to fucking exist and nobody gives a shit about them, right? We're, we're ignoring how many kids are there right now that are wearing fucking shoes that are two sizes too small for them because their parents can't afford it and nobody gives a fuck, right? This is the part that is very disappointing to me about all this culture war bullshit on both sides is exactly that. Real problems are always ignored. That's what it is. It's like, it's easier for you to fucking pander to your crowd, whether it's the woke people or the MAGA people, they're the same fucking people to me. They're people who make mountains out of molehills and 
argue over trivial dumb shit that doesn't matter. Meanwhile, the actual problems get ignored. That's my frustration with this. In all seriousness, that's my frustration, okay? But Let's go on because MC Ben Shapiro is about to drop some bars. I hope I offend you. I hope I offend you. Here he is. What would Ben do? Yeah, exactly. Outrage culture is outrage culture. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. That's exactly what it is. Like, if you are part of outrage culture, you are a fucking NPC, and I don't care what side of the aisle it's on. If you let yourself be manipulated and led around by the nose by outrage culture, the media on either side, you're a fucking NPC, and you're letting yourself become a pawn, okay? So you need to snap out of the fucking matrix, stop letting yourself be used, by clowns like Tom McDonald and clowns like fucking Rachel Maddow and all these people who monetize the fact that you're so easily outraged, okay? Like, you gotta snap out of this shit. Let's look at the stats. I've got the facts. My money Let's look at the stats. Homie, I'm epic. Don't be a whap. Look at the graphs. Look at my uh, charts. You're blowing money on strippers. Look at the graphs. Look at my charts. I love, here's what I respect is that Ben Shapiro is such a grifter, even though he clearly doesn't like black people, and even though he has talked all this shit about rap for years and years and years, he's such a grifter that if he can get a fucking paycheck by pandering to people with this terrible verse about facts and charts, he's like, give me the fucking check. And I'm on television, dog. No one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comment section all won't care. Oh, look, look at this. <laughs> Tom McDonald doing air comments. You know, it's like uh, you go to the show and the guy's playing air bass. You're like, ooh, this guy's into bass. Tom McDonald here doing air keyboard. My comment section all woke Karen. Nikki takes some notes. I just did this for fun. Nikki takes some notes. So I think he's referencing Nikki Minaj. Here's my favorite thing about all this, right? Here's my favorite thing. Nikki Minaj inadvertently dropped the hardest diss right here, okay? The hardest Tom McDonald diss of all time on Twitter. She said, Ben Shapiro put out a diss record. He said his comment sections are filled with woke Karens. The song is number one on US iTunes. A bunch of laughing emojis. Here's the best part. What is really happening and who is the other man rapping? <laughs> Who is the other man rapping? Isn't that the best part? Imagine how angry Tom McDonald is, is that Nicki Minaj didn't even know what his fucking name was. <laughs> Who is the other man rapping? That is the best. Ugh. Nikki with the inadvertent, just absolute fucking ethering of Tom McDonald. She cares so little about him. She didn't even see his fucking name in the title of the song. Absolute W. I want to talk about a couple other things that really kind of irritates me. Let me show you how stupid this culture war stuff has gotten is that these words mean nothing anymore, okay? Like, basically, if you call somebody a Nazi or a fascist, if you're on the left, that just means person I don't like, right? And if you're on the right, calling somebody a woke leftist just means person I don't like, right? You just These words mean nothing anymore. It just means you're a fascist, you're a woke leftist, they mean nothing. So like this guy here left uh, this comment on my video where I was saying that I didn't like Saint Anger. And here's what he said. This reviewer bloke is disrespectful to others. Genuine opinions on Saint Anger. Dismissing musicians is trying to be cool. I thought this guy was a genuine appraiser of music, but he's not. He is legitimately acting like a child. This guy is so clearly a woke leftist. He lets stereotypical people he imagines liking the song affect how he interprets the validity of the song. I don't care for this. So this is where it's gotten to now. It's like, if you don't like St. Anger, you're a woke leftist. Like, what? <laughs> what planet am I living on where if you don't like... This is how little these words now mean, okay? It means absolutely nothing. I'm sure there's somebody in my comments of the same video calling me a, 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 a fascist, a neo-fascist bootlicking apologist, right? These words mean nothing anymore because everyone has completely fucking lost the plot because... All people do is allow these fucking losers like Tom McDonald or his counterparts like fucking uh, Tom Morello to just lead you around by the nose and get you outraged about whatever the current thing is, right? And it's fucking stupid. So really, that's my whole message here is like, well, number one, actually, number one, now that the MAGA people have become 
the snowflakes now. After seeing this, it makes me want to buy a case of Bud Light. Just stand out in my front yard chugging Bud Light. Makes me want to watch Disney movies. And not the old ones. Makes me want to watch the new obnoxiously woke Disney movies. And then put one of those no human is illegal signs in my front yard. Just to fucking trigger people like Tom McDonald. I want to become an actual woke leftist. Just to fucking piss off Tom McDonald. I'm going full woke just to outrage him, <laughs> okay? But in all seriousness, you know, the, the answer here is not to pick a side, okay? You should be striving to be an actual free thinker, right? And if you're an actual free thinker, that means you're probably going to piss off people on both sides. This is exactly right. If you bootlick any government party, you're a fucking clown. That is exactly what it is, right? And so that's what's really sad to me is that, you know, in the world of punk and rock, they've basically become these like Democratic Party mouthpieces, right? Like remember when Rage Against the Machine played the fucking DNC in 2000 or whatever it is? And you're like, what fucking planet am I on where this supposedly anti-establishment band is like literally campaigning for one of the two major parties? Like what? You know, and then you've got on the other side now, you've got all these fucking MAGA rappers like fucking campaigning for Trump and painting his picture on the side of their fucking houses and shit. I'm like, what is wrong with you people, right? Like the establishment does not give a fuck about you or your welfare. All they care about is power, right? So to see anybody carrying water for the establishment is insane. Right. And what's also dumb is uh, what I like to call like opposite day, meaning and people on both sides do this. OK, opposite day is like if you identify as conservative, well, anything that the Democrats say, I have to oppose it. Anything that people on the left say or do, I have to be outraged about. Right. And people on the other on the other side do the same thing. Anything that Republicans do is automatically bad. And I have to be outraged about it. Right. Instead of just going, hmm, well, you know, I don't normally agree with them, but but actually that thing they just did, that was smart. I agree with that. I'm glad they did it. Yeah, it's like sports teams. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. And it's not sports teams because this shit is actually important. Remember, while well, you guys are arguing about the dumbest shit, like arguing over what some fucking senator tweeted. Meanwhile, there are single moms who are literally struggling to pay their fucking heating bill this winter because you are too busy arguing about dumb shit in the comments of a Tom McDonald video and ignoring them, okay? And that is the cost. There's an opportunity cost to everything. And so all the time that we spend arguing about dumb shit and being stupid tribalists and falling prey to this groupthink is time that's not spent actually helping people. No love for single dads. Well, this is a great example of what I'm talking about. You're taking my words in bad faith because clearly what I'm talking about is single parents, right? You took this as an attack on yourself as a man, right? But it wasn't an attack on men. It was clearly I was trying to advocate for single parents. And the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of single parents are women, right? That's just a fact. But instead of nodding and going, yeah, I get what you mean. Yes, we should be helping single single parents. You chose to get outraged about it, right? So this is what we need to stop. We need to like stop the outrage culture. People like Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro, and they have plenty of their counterparts on the left. But I would say right now, these people on the right are sort of the leaders of outrage culture. Yeah, but what about me? Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's the problem. So what we need to do is put an end to outrage culture, right? Because this is not rebellious. There's nothing rebellious about this at all. This is just stupid tribalist groupthink. You're not being rebellious. You're not challenging anything by simping for Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro, okay? You're not helping anyone do anything. All you're doing is fanning the flames of this dumb fucking outrage culture that comes at the cost of actually solving problems. So those are my thoughts on Tom McDonald and Ben Shapiro's Brand new song, Facts. All I gotta say is Tupac, he's been real quiet since Ben Shapiro dropped this heater, huh? Tupac got nothing to say about this one. That's all I have to say.